Welcome back folks to the VIA pinstriping page. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching. So today we're just gonna do some very simple moves, which I think might help folks if they are just learning how to uh, begin scrolling. And uh, we're gonna be using some alpha enamel and the Kafka number three scroller. So, let's get to it this is just a piece of cardboard paper folks nothing fancy and here's my brush it's already loaded up and i'll knock a little bit of paint off of here just by touching the tip right now what we're going to do we're going to do some scrolls going to the left we're going to try to do all these in the middle so we're going to go upwards around to the left cut through the middle Go around and end right there, All right? Now, those are very tight. You can open them up and do them more oval shaped if you'd like or longer. So let's try that. All right, long through the middle. Something like that. <clears throat> now, let's try going the opposite way. Up and around. Cut through the middle. Around. And just end back inside. Now, keep in mind... When you're doing scrolling, you want to be on just the very tip. I'm going to take a look here on the camera. Just the very tip of the brush. It will flex some, you know, when you're moving it. And I'm not spinning the brush in my hand. I'm just staying on the very tip. I like to hold it like this. I have seen um, Steve Chaseka and some other people hold it like this. It's really your call. But this is the way I've, hold, I've held it. I sort of wish I learned this number. But I just, I, I'm self-taught, so, and I'm still learning. I'm still a beginner. Um, I am not professional status by any means, so keep that in mind, folks. So, we went one way, we went the other way. Make sure you stay on the very tip of the brush. The consistency of the paint, you want it to be a little bit runnier than if you were doing traditional style pinstriping. And you want the brush to be a little bit more loaded up. So now that I've gone this way, let's try going underneath and see if you can match it. All right, so now I'm going to go this way. Go around. Go around. Something like that. Right? You can keep going as many loops as you want, but the idea is, in my mind, to try to go one way. Keep going one way. Matter of fact, you see how I went and try to match this one. See if you can match the one. Now, instead of going from the top, we're going to go underneath. Now, I got this camera in my way, so I'm going to try my best. Something like that. All right, so we've gone left, right. Now let's try going downward. And I'm gonna do this, um, I'm gonna do this right here. So we're gonna start, we're gonna go outward, make my loop, go around, come up. Something like that. Now, I will say there were moments where my hand has covered up what I'm doing, and that's going to happen, folks. So paint consistency is key. Practice is key. Your hand will eventually get to kind of understanding what it's going to do. You might lose sight of the line, but you just keep on going, and you'll get the feel for it. How much should you practice? As much as you can. And we're not talking about days. We're not talking about weeks. 
We're talking in the months and the years, folks. Months and years. So if you've just been at it for a couple of months, that is barely, barely, barely starting. I got five years and I'm still just barely scratching the surface at this stuff. So keep that in mind. All right, so I'm going to try, try to match this. And again, you don't have to try to match this. You could just keep going one way. Just keep going and going and going until you feel comfortable doing loops, right? Keeping a, a consistent speed and try to keep them nice and round because as you can see, I got a little, I don't know if you can tell, but I got a little flat spot here. Here it kicked out on me a little bit. So these are things you want to work on. These are things I still need to work on. But, you know, being able to go one way, being able to go the other way, being able to go down, and now I'm going to show you how to go up. So it's all the same thing, but it's a circular movement. When you're doing traditional style, you're always pulling the brush. Even when you're making a spin, you're sort of always pulling it and turning it in your hand and all this it, it's just a completely different thing. So I'm palleting my brush right now. Now, um, I'm using the Kafka scrollers. These are the ones that I like. Again, they're damn near all good, all these brushes that are on the market. So I would suggest you try what works best for you. Um, get yourself a Wizard Typhoon or something. Try that one. Uh, try any of the Wizards. Try any of the Kafkas, try any of the Vondagos, try any of the Max. Any, any brush you can get a hold of for scrolling, try them. Because you're never going to know which one's going to work best with your hand. It's really, really personal. It's just like your shoe size, you know. Your style, how you work, how you do things. It's all going to be individual. So let's try going upward. So I'm going to start on this side. Now, I could tell right now, you see how fat that line got? My paint was too thin, but I'm just going to keep going. See, it's giving me a very inconsistent line. That's because my paint was over-reduced. Too much talking, not enough focusing. Now, I got a little bit more. Now, I feel the paint's a little better. It's dried up a little. Same paint. I haven't reduced it anymore. It just dries up on its own. Well, let's see what happens this time. Right, it didn't blotch out quite as much. I got a little more control. Right. So now we've gone left, we've gone right, we've gone down, we've gone up. So that's the idea. Just do some loops. Whichever way you're comfortable at first going just keep going that way until you start getting consistent then you go the way you know your least favorite and just do them all eventually you'll get to where you can go any which way you want with them and that's the key because you never know what part of the car or what project somebody might want you to do and you might have to kick out loops any which way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get real close up so you can see see the brush work in a very close manner now I'm going to try to get my paint right that way it's not skipping lines and doing this and that first real fast I'm going to show you what happens if you push down too hard so this is what I used to do because you know I at one point I had just started out just just started out so I would push down and it would look something like this Right, big old fat lines. Be very, 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 very chunky, spitting out paint everywhere. Right, that's kind of how you end because you're just pushing down way too hard. If you don't push down enough, you'll get these super thin kind of. It's kind of hard to not push down enough at this point. <laughs> you get very, very inconsistent. Kind of just super thin lines, right? So, I feel like almost every brush kind of has a line that it likes to make. And again, it comes with time. It comes with practice. 
but you'll sort of, sort of understand that this, this brush likes to make a line sort of this size. Once you've felt this thing in your hand enough times and the handle is no longer bright wood color, it's dark because you've used it so many times, you'll really, you'll really get an understanding of what a consistent line should be with that particular brush. Every brush gets its own kind of line. Now granted, you push down harder, you'll get a thicker line, obviously. But I think some are just happiest doing particular lines. Again, my opinion. So, let's try to kick out some scrolls here. Let me get back down here. And you can see what it looks like very, very up close. Right, you can see the amount of flex. You can see the speed that I'm going. See how much pain is being released. The consistency of the line or lack thereof. Right, I started running out of paint there. And it could just be my mix. It could be the humidity. It could be uh, the lack of humidity. It could be, hell, the reducer that I'm using. It could be a number of things causing it to prematurely run out but even then I, you know I generally am not kicking out that many loops anyway so maybe it's not premature maybe that's a normal time so you know a lot of things to think about when doing this stuff again I'm not spinning the brush in my hand let me get back up here I'm not spinning it I'm literally just laying it down and letting it flow its own way right see again the paint is too thin and just started blotching out as soon as I put it down but it's just going to do its own thing. At no point has the position of my hand changed. So, hopefully that helps, folks. Sorry for all the blurriness and all the moving. Um, I've done a few takes, and it's been kind of difficult to, to show this stuff the way I want to show it. Um, again, this is all opinionated. Look up some extra information if you can. Try to get as much info as you can and utilize what works best for you. And hopefully this has been informational and I hope that you have a good day. I'll see you.